Do we have the TV station? They're here. Yes. Yep. Okay. Let's make sure they're on. Are they ready? It's Are good. You good for us to go. Awesome. Great. Thank you, everybody. Welcome. Uh, tonight's uh, meeting is July 19th, uh, Tuesday the 19th, the school committee meeting. Uh, I'd like to call to order and have an approval of the agenda, please. So moved. I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Aye. you. Aye. Uh, may I see if there's any comments from the public? Seeing none, hearing none, we'll move on to the superintendent's report. All right, so um, last week, Dr. Jennifer Raybold and I, who is probably trying to get in the door. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> Will we just like place a the chair there? <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah, not a bad idea. Hi, Esmeralda. <laughs> nope. That's okay. It should have. I'll wait one moment if that's okay. Sure. Great. I know. It's not so easy. <laughs> well, I'm glad you it worked. So I was back there and then I got stuck. <laughs> I was behind you guys. Oh, yeah. And I was in my car making a phone call. And then when I tried to get in, I was like, I couldn't. <laughs> So then I had to leave, go around, stuck in traffic. Okay. Okay. Shall I continue? Yeah, please do. No worries. Okay. So um, I'm going to report a little bit on the MASS Executive Institute. Um, last week, Dr. Jennifer Raybould and I attended the Massachusetts Association of School Superintendents Annual Executive Institute for three days. Um, I'll share some information about one of the keynote speakers and then the workshops that I attended. Um, over the course of the three days, and then Dr. Raybould will do the same at the podium um, for the other keynote speaker and those workshops that she attended. Um, the title of this year's institute was Looking Ahead, Promoting Equity, Wellness, Academic Achievement, and a Culture of Care for All, um, with each day having a different theme connecting to this broader title. On Tuesday, the theme was Self-Care and Well-Being of Our Membership. Um, it did not go unnoticed by MASS that the last two years were most likely the most challenging professionally and emotionally for superintendents in the Commonwealth and their leadership teams. The first two keynote speakers were Dr. John Daria, a, a former sup uh, superintendent and current university professor, and Dr. Rob Evans, who is a renowned Massachusetts-based psychologist and school consultant. Each of them had a wealth of knowledge to impart to us, particularly around the importance of leaders understanding and acknowledging their own emotions during difficult times. The workshops that I attended um, on the first day addressed the importance of sharing and celebrating our successes as superintendents, along with coping strategies that worked for us and other mechanisms that uh, really helped to us to move forward. I also intended, attended an operational session about the educator license, uh, licensure regulations and procedures provided by the Department of Education. Uh, this focused on the emergency licensure as well as some other changes and um, things that were updates for all superintendents to know. Um, the next day we had a roundtable meeting uh, with superintendents from our neighboring districts um, and our roundtable is called the Old Colony Superintendents Roundtable. Uh, where we discuss the meeting schedule and the professional learning topics for the year. Um, this is a great opportunity for superintendents to get together and do some professional learning, um, kind of like our extended work days or our PD days for, um, for our staff, so it's something similar for, for superintendents. Another workshop session that I attended and found to be really valuable was around a, um, one district's creation of a pre-K to 12 multi-tiered system of support to build academic and social emotional coherence and success. Um, this was very helpful to hear about how the superintendent and his leadership team gained buy-in from educators and families to, main, um, to make meaningful improvements to student achievement and well-being through SEL. Uh, so now I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Raybould, and she will tell you a little bit about um, what she experienced. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. So um, there was a, a kind of a, an assistant superintendents and directors track. Um, that I attended some of the workshops there. One was called Promoting an Equitable PLC that Creates a Culture of Care for All. One was called Differentiating PD for Our Educators. Um, and one that was particularly useful um, was Challenges in Leading Districts in High Quality Curriculum Adoption. And these were run kind of as um, EdCamp, which is, um, it's not necessarily one presenter 
you know, presenting for the whole hour, but a presenter who presents an idea or a question or some um, a set of questions, and then everyone in the room kind of contributes their own experience. And that was really useful to talk about how other districts um, have adopted curriculum and what the challenges of that are. Um, the uh, second day of the Institute, we had a keynote which was really exciting. Ibram X. Kendi from Boston mm -hmm. University was our speaker. Um, mm -hmm. And he was really amazing. Um, the thing that was a little bit sad is that he had to have security with him, um, I guess because the work that he does is dangerous um, to a lot of people. So um, that was something that was a little bit, um, give us all a little bit of pause. Um, he just talked a little bit about um, different policies to really reconsider from an anti-racist perspective. Um, particularly around responses to misbehavior and cultural responsiveness with that. Um, I really loved that his whole presentation was full of hope. Um, one of the quotes that I wrote down from him was that hope is critical because you have to believe that change is possible, which I loved. He also had a challenge for us in Massachusetts. He said we need to be thinking about how can Massachusetts serve as a beacon, as a model of what a state can do to create anti-racist education that we have that responsibility given that we do have a lot of support in the state um, and we need to recognize the power that we have as a state. Um, after he spoke, we had a kind of a panel discussion with two superintendents and two students, which was really wonderful to hear that student voice, which was really great. Um, two, two quotes that I have, one was from the superintendent of Everett, and I don't know if you've seen um, Everett in the news lately, but they've um, been at kind of the center of a lot of um, change, cultural change. She is the first um, superintendent of color in Everett, and um, it has been a bit challenging for her. Um, and she, her comment was, your sacrifice needs to match your privilege. And she said, and we need to think about how in the positions that we're in, we all are privileged in some ways, some more than others. Um, and then a student from Mashby, who was just the most amazing speaker, her name was Skyla, her comment that I loved was, the strongest anti-racist work that you can do is love. Um, and then we had some work, um, the Massachusetts Association of School Superintendents has been working on um, a whole program called READY, which is, stands for Racial Equality, Diversity, and Inclusion, and they have kind of a playbook that we are gonna be investigating a little bit more. Um, and then I went to a wonderful workshop after that called From Valuing DEI, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, to Effective Leadership Practices and Strategies. Um, and they asked a few questions that I thought were really um, meaningful and I will continue to think on. <coughs> how to lead others to have, how do we lead others to have courageous conversations under dangerous circumstances? What is the work of an educator, uh, educational leader when equity is at the center? And do all students have access to high quality instruction materials and high performing educators? And to be really self-critical with those questions. So it was, um, it was a great, I think, start for a new year. And it was, it was wonderful to be at not just a virtual <laughs> workshop or conference, but to actually <coughs> do um, a lot of networking with colleagues and just sharing great ideas. A lot of the, the lunch times were spent talking to colleagues and sharing ideas and strategies. So, yeah. Any questions? Thank you. I have a couple of additional pieces mm -hmm. to tell about the last day just to kind of finish things up. So. Um, the last day was called Moving Forward, which was meaningful because we've talked about what has gone on during COVID and last year, which was um, coming out of COVID, or at least we, we think coming out of COVID. We're not um, entirely out just yet, but, um, but it was really helpful to enjoy uh, ourselves in the last day. Um, they, um, MASS treated us to comedian Jimmy Tingle who really lifted our spirits and, and made us, um, gave us lots of things to think about and laugh about. Um, and he did talk about um, what it was like during the pandemic for him, but also what he perceived uh, um, from us and, and how he thought it was difficult, uh, the difficulties that we went through. And, and we had a really good laugh because humor is so important along with um, all of the rest that comes with leadership and humor has to be uh, present in order to, to keep going. Um, we also heard from a panel of student leaders who are part of Project 351, which is, um, you may have heard us speak about this before. It's a diverse student leadership group 
with one representative from each of the 351 school districts in the state. Um, Nantucket has had a leader, um, had a Project 351 representative, um, and we hope that we will continue to have that student go and be part of this leadership group. It is really what worked and didn't work in the last few years, particularly around diversity, equity, and inclusion. So that was really meaningful to hear them telling us what they thought needed to happen. So it's mm -hmm. good to have that student voice always present. Um, and so again, thank you very much for supporting us in, in being able to go to an opportunity like this. I hope to be able to bring more um, of the um, um, central office directors uh, to come. Jennifer was available, the others um, weren't available, but I'm hoping next year we can have a few more come. It is really a great opportunity for them, so, mm -hmm. and for me, of course, so, so thank you. Um, I can continue or we can ask questions for having you. Lucky? Yes. Um, yes, I have a question. Um, the, the Project 351, um, how would a, a student be nominated for that? The nominations actually go through at the middle school um, to start, and then um, there's training and an opportunity to be part of a Project 351 assembly that I think goes over the course of a couple of days. So. So are, the, are these middle school students? I didn't, I didn't get the age bracket you're, you're, you were so speaking about. So they really mm -hmm. actually run the gamut. Um, once you're in Project 351, you end up staying if you wish to as a representative. And so um, there were people who were ninth graders, uh, eighth graders going into ninth grade. There were some who were um, freshmen, I mean, um, uh, 11th graders going into 12th grade. So it's really, um, it really depends. And um, it's, it's, again, just a great leadership group, and, and they have done a lot of good work around moving, the, moving student voice up to the forefront, which is really important, so. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Tim? Is my all No questions. Okay. Um, just uh, going back on, onto the Project 351, so do you have one student per school district yes. that attends? Okay, yes. so we've had the same student attend for a while? I haven't followed through. Uh, Tracy will know. Thank you. So that was Tracy Malo, in case the TV didn't pick that up. Um, that we do have a school representative that's in eighth grade, and they're nominated through the staff, if I'm hearing it rightly, and they go through the school year. I, w I would love at some point um, to have a presentation sure. from from that student, and to, I'd like to, you know, I think, and if the committee agrees, I think mm -hmm. it would be great for us to hear about their experience and. Um, some of the things that they may be bringing back to the district and how we can support them. Sure. sure I mean, I concur. This is the first I've heard of it. Yeah. It's like Area 51. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Quite different. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's fine. That's fine. But if you we can do more if we know more. One of the things that Project 351 has been working on, and I really like it and would like to make sure we try to bring it to our school system, is the NBA playbook. There is a um, series of student-led peer-to-peer uh, um, uh, opportunities to uh, learn about racism and to learn about um, how, to, how to fight racism and things that are um, you know, perceptions that students may be feeling and f or um, may be bringing to the table. So um, it's really very well put together. It's, it, um, there's a training, uh, there's, there are training sessions and you can have, um, the idea is to train the upperclassmen to then come into the, the, um, uh, the middle school and do um, things during an, a, like, a, like a, an extended homeroom or an advisory period uh, in order to allow for um, more understanding and awareness around racism, anti-racism, and, um, and diversity, equity, inclusion. So well, I'd like to see that. the reason why I bring it up, we're on the diversity committee, are we, Esmeralda? And this is the first I'm hearing of it, which is kind of like why we heard this from the jump. 
being you and I on this diversity committee, and it's that's my fault and your fault, and then <coughs> I'll take the blame on that. Um, just not following through in that, but I, I I hear what you're saying, but we should know more about this. You know what I mean? I should hear about this in July. If I may, through the chair, Project mm -hmm. 351 has only shifted its focus on on the latest. Um, in most recent years. It was not necessarily um, focused on DEI. It was more about just bringing student voice to the forefront. Mm -hmm. So. The, the day of service on Martin Luther King weekend yes. was a major focus of the project. Having yeah. been a former principal, that's overdrawn. So maybe what we can suggest or ask for is to have the diversity um, committee meet with you and, and if it's coming through the middle school, then with um, Mrs. Malo mm -hmm. or Mr. Horton sure. or Ms. Lombardi, so that we can learn a little bit more. And then, as, as you said, we can we, we can support more once we mm -hmm. know about it. But it sounds like some good work is being done. Yes. We're good? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll continue. Um, the hiring uh, process. So as, to, as was to be expected, we have undergone um, some further shifts in staffing with it, some additional resignations and retirements. Um, we currently have 18 positions still open, but we are getting closer to filling them, which is very encouraging. Uh -huh. um, we are still searching, however, for qualified candidates in high school math, school psychologists, social workers, and adjustment counselors, um, and along with a few others. These are critical positions, and we are still not able to fill them. So I am doing basically anything I can uh, to get the word out, um, looking at new job search engines, um, Monster, you know, um, Monster.com, LinkedIn, anything at this point to try and see uh, what we can find. Um, we are concerned about TAs, um, as we have many positions to fill and very few applicants. Um, we have had discussions with NTA leadership, and we are carefully examining the current TA contract to find ways to provide some incentives around time, um, meaning shortening the requirements around extended work days and professional development. And we think that that might attract more people to the position because the, if they know that they can um, keep the schedule uh, concurrent with their small children, perhaps they would be more willing to uh, make the jump and, and um, join us as a TA. It is still only mid-July, so we are not yet in panic mode. The panic button hasn't been hit just yet. So, um, and I, like I said, we've had some very encouraging interviews and um, some some things coming up soon. We are still looking for an EL director, and we do have a few um, a few uh, interviews coming up soon. So, that as well is something that we are looking forward to hiring for. Um, I can move on to enrollment yep. unless there are any questions. So um, enrollment. So you will see that I provided a, um, a form that is um, not only the end of year, but also projected enrollment. Let me just get that out so we can all look at it. Um, so, um, <coughs> excuse me. We ended the year with um, 1,707 students. Um, and we'll begin the year with 1,716 students. So we're seeing a very small increase. Um, if you look at our enrollment chart here, you will notice that um, the Nantucket Intermediate School is gaining a class of fifth graders. So we did have to add in our, and that was in our budget, we knew this was coming, so um, we added a fifth grade teacher. Um, but we do see our numbers sli slightly and slowly creeping up. Um, we have not included our sped uh, sped excuse me, special education students in the um, projected enrollment, and we have not um, also uh, totaled in all of our kindergarten yet. It's still coming. I mean, this is what we've got, but, but kindergarten is constantly uh, uh, coming in and enrolling. And also we see um, multilingual learners uh, coming year round. So we assume that this number, 1716, 1716, will go up. So something to keep our eye on as we move forward. Um, space is definitely um, something that we are concerned with. Um, high school in particular is creeping up to almost 600. So it is something that we, we are aware of. So, uh, and that's all I have for today. Okay, Rocky, any other further up? Yeah, questions? through the chair. When, um, Ms. Kubish, when is the, um, the sign up date for kindergartners to sign up? Is it already passed? Mm -hmm. And then um, that's just like a informational. Then we 
did our um, screening day May 11th and then screening again June 17th, I think. And then, um, but so they just keep enrolled. All right. Uh, uh, one of my questions is, will there be another screening before the, um, the, the kindergarten kids are placed into their classrooms? No. Okay. If not, then will they be able to be moved out of their rooms and, and pieced? At, no, that's the wrong choice of words, but moved around. Because when I went to the schools last year, I, I found that there was a lot of kids in this one room and maybe not as much in this room. But some of the TAs have said, you know what, when the, when the kids get comfortable with the surroundings and the teacher, the parents didn't want to move them. Is that correct? So if I, can I just interrupt for a minute, if this is all right to have continue this conversation. Can I just ask you to come up, please, to the microphone? Thank you. Sorry. I'm sorry. Can I have a cheerleader voice? I'm not loud enough from the <laughs> not audience. Not for the TV <laughs> audience. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kim. Um, so. Uh, the placement is very strategic, um, and it is based on what we know about students and <coughs> students who are coming with in-place IEPs go into certain rooms where TAs and special ed teachers are. Um, at registration, we do tend to get that information, so we try to be strategic, as I said, about placement. We're at 112 right now, all placed where they should be placed based on all the information we have. And the difference between this year and last year is um, we have met and potentially screened more than 100 of the 112. So that's very different than what we had because of COVID last year. Um, any students with a language that is not English, they will go through a little screening to determine their level of performance for uh, English language learner support. But we will not be doing the screening that we did May 11th and June 17th or 20th. So we usually get a few kids between now and September, but um, they probably won't go through that level of screening. Okay, I guess my question is once they get into after September, the first couple of weeks of school, are they allowed to move from room to room? Or what, once they get there, that's it? That's, so th that's what they're there for the, for the remainder of the year? No, we will certainly make decisions about moving kids. We have done that before. Our staff feel very strongly, and that's part of responsive classroom. Nobody moves for the first six weeks because everyone needs to have the chance to adjust and learn their setting. Um, so no one moves through the first six weeks. Um, and then we can make moves that parents can come in and ask about or teachers can share or we can see for ourselves like, wow, this child may be in a better spot in this room or... All right. Thank you. Thank Does you that answer it? Yes, 100%. Thank you very much. Ms. Merrill, do you have any questions? No questions. <laughs> um, can I just ask about housing at the moment? Who is the point person for the district for connecting uh, new candidates or current staff to so housing? Currently it's myself and um, Katie Bedell. So the two of us are keeping track of, um, of, of people who are coming with um, needs, but also with offerings. So we have started to um, do a little bit of matchmaking. Um, it's, it's a difficult process because everyone has very special needs and then also the, um, uh, those that are, 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 are renting their, their properties have specific needs as well. So it, it's not easy. And um, with Katie being new in her position um, and uh, you know, we, are, we, are, we are working to, uh, uh, to, to fill and to do that matchmaking as soon as possible. So Okay. Um, I ask because a couple of people have reached out to me mm -hmm. and I was going to go and see a house today, but I don't want to step on anyone's toes, but I just didn't want you to be um, involved if it wasn't going to be something that was going to be helpful for the school. So I appreciate any assistance that anyone okay. wants to give. So if, if, if there's something that comes up or you hear from someone who um, might like to rent their house out or um, their cottage and 
you want to do a screening of it, um, that's helpful to us because it's less of that that right. we would have to do. But do you have current right. people who've been hired who are looking or waiting to be yes. placed somewhere? Correct. Okay. Yes. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Tim, any other comments? No. May I add, may I um, add one more thing to the of superintendent's remark? I yep. wanted to give a very warm welcome to our new director of um, the Nantucket Community School, and that's Alicia Gracia Day, who is with us today. Welcome. We are thrilled <laughs> to have her. Yes. And um, so Alicia comes to us from the Nantucket New School and um, has already been in the job for a few weeks, and and uh, we are excited. Actually, really one week, right? <laughs> Six days. So, um, but we are excited to have her on the leadership team, and we will be having our retreat, and she'll be our new member. So we'll have to uh, give her a big welcome there too. Yeah, so thank you. Welcome. It's great. Terrific. All right. Well, moving on to presentations. This is my honor to ask Carlisle Jensen, who's the executive director for Egan Maritime, to come up. And I have here Evan Schwanfeld who was joining you, but he's not. Okay. So Carlisle is going to talk to us about the public programs that Eager Maritime has been <laughs> supporting, um, I think, nine years. Yeah. It's a long time. Well, thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Hi. Hi. Hello, everyone. Um, it is an honor to be back here. A little fun fact. Um, I was the student representative to the school committee um, from 2009 to 2011. Um, so I've been here before, just um, never quite given the microphone. Um, and I also would really like to thank Pauline. Uh, she was the executive director at Egan prior to me. Um, and she really laid the groundwork for everything that we're doing within the schools. Um, and I would not be standing here if it wasn't for all the hard work that she did. Um, sadly, Evan's not able to be here. He was traveling back and Everyone knows how, what it's like to travel back to Nantucket, um, mm -hmm. especially in July, so I'm sorry about that. So I just wanted to quickly go through some of the highlights from um, this last school year. Um, Egan Maritime partners with the eighth grade to offer an oceanography course, um, and we were able to have a full in-person eighth grade class led by um, Lindsay Resick which was phenomenal. I think we were, Evan was so happy to be back in the schools. We were so happy to be able to offer it to our students um, and it was really wonderful. So a few highlights in the fall term, we really focused on um, harbor formation, ecology, invasive species, wetlands, ecosystems, and impacts of climate change on the environment. Uh, we partnered with the Pond Coalition, Land Bank, Land Council, in the Natural Resources Department, and our number one goal was to get students outside of the classroom, in the field, and really learning with their hands. Um, and after a couple of years on the screens, it was really important for us that our, our students got their hands dirty again. Um, so that was really wonderful, and we were so grateful to the entire um, administration at the, at the middle school for helping this happen. Um, in the spring term, we did a lot of work um, on weather and climate. Um, and ocean currents, which was really, really phenomenal, um, and included an all-class field trip to the shellfish hatchery. So again, another opportunity to get outside the classroom and really, really learn, learn about our maritime culture on the island. Um, finally, the spring term always includes the ever-famous cardboard boat race, um, which is truly one of the most fun events I've ever seen. Um, and again, the entire staff at the, the Cyrus Piers Middle School really helped out for that, uh, as well as the folks at the community pool. So we're really grateful for that. And again, you know, students up in the balconies screaming and yelling um, is really nice to see, especially after, you know, sitting on a computer for a while. Um, Egan also has a partnership with the Tall Ship Links, uh, which is a wonderful partnership that allows for um, truly hands-on maritime education on the water in a really phenomenal um, tall ship. So we were able to take the entire third grade and um, the eighth grade class out uh, for two, two hour sails this spring. Um, the eighth grade focused a little bit more on the science behind um, the harbor and did a little bit more of a discussion on, um, on kind of what they were seeing in the water and what it was like to, um, to sail a boat in this sort of climate versus the third grade was doing more on Nantucket history. So we talked a little bit more about the history of the island. Um, so it was really nice, again, to, to get our students out, and the staff was so phenomenal. 
Um, we also had two successful eighth grade trips um, where we had seven students um, join the links and go out for um, three days, two, two nights. Um, they went, one group went to Woods Hole and one group went to Martha's Vineyard. I apologize, one student came back a pirate. It was not our fault, he just embraced his natural, his natural <laughs> self. Um, and it was just really phenomenal to see them from the first day at orientation of you need to bring a dry sack to um, meeting them as they were coming off the, coming off the boat and you know, with calluses on their hands and, and really, really got to do something special. So we're really happy <coughs> that we were able to offer that. Looking ahead, um, I'm sorry that Dr. Bardsley and Mr. Horton are not able to be here, but we've been meeting quite a bit to talk about some curriculum changes, and we're really looking forward to continuing our relationship with the schools and expanding what Egan Maritime is able to do um, beyond just the eighth grade and thinking about students, you know, once they first get exposed in third grade, what happens next and how can we continue to encourage students to think about um, careers in the maritime culture, to learn about the maritime culture, um, to remember we live on an island with a really deep maritime history, um, and using, using our resources as a tool to help um, enhance educational opportunities. Um, we are also really, really excited that um, the Innovative Pathways program is going to be off the ground and running. Um, so Egan will have um, a role in the high school level, so we'll be offering a sp spring uh, the fall term is on focused on environmental science and the spring term is going to be a technical course so and then in addition to that we're going to be working to build some really um, important kind of internships to expose students who are going through those different steps mm -hmm. to say maybe intern at the boatyard maybe intern with Egan um, really to think about or maybe intern with the harbor master to really think about okay we're learning these stuff in school, let's let's do some practical learning and some experiential learning as well. Um, so that's really exciting. And again, it's just continuing that thread um, from you know grade three when they're on the links for the first time, all the way up until um, grade grade twelve when they're thinking about what's next. Um, and then we, you know we also all, all also are thinking, um, particularly my focus and Evan's focus is really what opportunities are there that Egan can expose and be a bridge to help our students learn about. Um, hiring is an issue. Everyone's having staffing problems. Um, but particularly, um, you know, the boatyards, um, the steamship, people who are, you know, working, working on the water, fishermen, anything, any sort of career that's in the maritime culture. Um, so Evan and I are thinking about ways in which Egan can help expose students who are interested and um, bridge, be that bridge to help them get from A to Z. So um, otherwise, we have a great summer happening. We have public programs happening at the museum all the time. We're really trying to take the kind of the model that Pauline and Evan so beautifully built within Sea of Opportunities and bring it to the whole community. Um, we have free public programs, educational programs, um, Monday through Friday at the museum from 10 to 4. Anyone's welcome. Anything that's outside, not in the museum, is 100% free. Um, so we encourage anyone to stop by and, and see what we're doing. Rocky, any questions? Tim? It sounds interesting. Uh, I'm excited. Yeah. Yes. Esmeralda? No questions, just I'm fascinated. <laughs> <laughs> well, if anyone wants to join us on a Lynx field trip, the more the merrier. Um, I was going to go Google. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, of course. I can send some materials. I, I just have one question. Did you do a high school um, week? We did not do a high school oh, week okay. this year. Um, due to the schedule and the timing, the high school week was going to be during the last week of school. So we kind of pivoted and offered some day sales at the high school level. Um, and we're hoping that with the new innovative partnerships relationship and having a real presence at the high school, that the high school sale will kind of gain traction and, mm -hmm. and happen again. Excellent. Well, thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you all. OK, we're at the point for committee discussions and votes to be taken. Um, there's a wonderful donation in here from Sankity Head Golf Club. 
for the uh, Nantucket High School gold team in the amount of $25,000. <coughs> May I please have an approval for the donation? I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Amazing. Um, approval donation, please, of the Stop and Shop to Adopt to Lunch program for $103. May I have a motion to accept? Move approval. Thank you. Second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. May I have an approval of the meeting minutes of June 21st? Move approval. Thank so you. Moved. Second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye. And may I also have a approval, please, for the payroll and invoices? Second. Second. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't ask you yet. Uh, all in favor? <laughs> Just livening up a little bit. Um, okay. So moving on for the agenda for the next meeting, July 26, we are going to have a workshop session, um, and Dr. Hallett will be presenting her evidence that we will um, be meeting on and so um, I did I um, will be preparing and, and presenting and and I certainly um, would love to hear from anyone if there are specifics around what types of evidence you would like to see so that's always helpful for me to have a guide but it's around those points the points that yes that you presented the specific yes yeah. the focus indicators that I that I sent um, I can send that document again. Um, if you remember in June, we had, um, I did send it just immediately after that, but I'm happy to send it a second time so you'll be able to see the focus indicators that um, are included and certainly the evidence output I will share. I can do a self evaluation as well, which is always helpful. So that can happen. And I would say to our newer members, if you've got any questions prior to going into the workshop, feel free to reach out to either Tim or myself. And I will extend that to Laura as well because um, obviously we want you to be as comfortable and, and as knowledgeable as you can prior to the workshop mm -hmm. and especially feeling supported going into your um, evaluation before we present mm -hmm. in a Well, in I'd a like to extend meeting. all that with Dr. Keating and sure. the fact that the career is important. Sure. And then it's up to you to go through. That'd be great. Please and thank you. Um, I just wanted to, to make a mention that um, Tim and I met with Beth um, on a couple of um, points and we had a conversation with Beth to see if Tim and I, um, with the permission of the committee, to meet with Dr. Hallett and her pr leadership team, pr primarily um, principals during the <coughs> summer, to talk about um, plans that the school has, has for the next school year going in to address um, social and emotional support, but also around discipline and behavior. I think, you know, we're all in agreement that we cannot have our schools be um, violated, toilets blocked, um, other, you know, physical actions that are happening that are harming our schools. and. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's a small group, but I think we need to be able to, as a school committee, ask the question, how can we support our leadership team? How can we support what, you know, how we're moving forward and addressing this? And I, and I don't want to do that, you know, in a small group. I just think it's necessary for us to have that conversation. Um, I hear what you're saying, but why is it just you and you two? Why isn't it the whole committee meeting with principles well we we could get to that I think at the moment during summer um, we thought I, I, I get what you're saying Pauline but I'm saying you, you guys it's, this is a school committee mm -hmm. so you'd prefer to have it as a workshop we could I wouldn't I don't think it's so you two are meeting with the leadership but what about the rest of the three of us so what we were thinking or what we had discussed is that we would come back and report to the committee I don't feel comfortable with that okay if so I, we'd have to, ha it would be a public meeting, but we could do a workshop. Um, so then would you be able to arrange with the principals a time? This so we need to look them. at the calendar and add a workshop then, uh, yep. if it has to be something in August. It's going to be challenging simply because we have vacations. It's a public meeting yeah. now. Um, it has to be a workshop, not a, not a, um, a full meeting, because uh, it, that entails 
not being able to that's presentational so right. we'll we'll look at the schedule we'll uh, I'll speak with the principals and um, we'll try to to do that um, I, I, I am not sure we'll be able to get it in in August but we can try I didn't okay. see it honestly it's so scripted and the structure of, of the school committee it, then we just need to make it a public meeting that's all um, so we can do that well you made it public when you brought it up no, I know that. <laughs> That's why I wanted to bring it up to, to inform right. um, the conversation. But I think if it's something that we all will be. Um, well, how do you feel, Admiral? I'm okay with it. Um, personally, I would be fine if they were, they were to meet and report back to me. If I may, um, it's common that these types of things happen through, us, through subcommittees. If we wanted to create a behavioral um, subcommittee we certainly could do so in which case uh, then it becomes a report back just as we do with um, other other subcommittees so well through the chair I don't want to create another subcommittee but I just want to be involved with what's going on with the principals okay so then then I would ask if you could set up a time or for a workshop in August and if it cannot be in August then it would need to be once schools open Okay. I don't want to. I don't want to slow the process down, though. Okay, that's that's no. the last thing I want to do. So, I'm just. So, so I want to be involved. Well, a let's bit see more. what what Beth can can come okay. up with as far as everybody's schedule. Because what I'm hearing is, many people are taking their vacations in. People are taking month. vacation between when we meet for school committee uh, on the 9th and the 23rd. So it's 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 a busy time. I'm not sure we'll be able yep. to get everybody together, but we can certainly try. Thank you. Any other comments or Rocky? No, ma'am. Tim? Beth, any other? I just wanted to mention one thing. Thank you. Um, we, uh, you will see in your packet, we actually had minutes for um, June 14th that needed to be approved, but because they did not get on the agenda, um, small error on our part. Um, we will move that uh, for a vote to approve on uh, August 9th. August night. Oh yes. So we'll, it's a we will. On the they're 26th. in the packet, but we'll re put we'll put them back in the packet for the August gotcha. 9th meeting. Okay. So. And the workshop will be here in the LGI. Um, we can find a, a different location if we wish. Okay. Um, certainly, we could have it. Um, uh, there are various places, the conference room, but we'll find a location. Okay. And that just remind me, that's at six or is it five? It'll be at six, six. unless we want to change it to five. But at the moment, we we have not. Um, determined the time. It's up to you how you'd like to do that. Six works for me. Yep. Okay. okay. I'm fine with six. Okay. Yep. Okay. We'll keep it at six. Great. May I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I have a second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone.